Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by the Law Office of Douglas Viviani. Douglas Viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years. We're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter that you may have for a reasonable fee. If you are involved in a car accident, starting a business, planning your estate, or need a criminal attorney, please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation. Get the justice you deserve. Contact the Law Office of Douglas Viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com. Well.com. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. Welcome to Everything Old is New Again, and that, of course, is a clip from the Jersey Boys, the movie, which is, of course, a Broadway show first, and now has become a movie directed by none other than Clint Eastwood. There's been some reviews, positive and negative. I went to go see it and it inspired me to put this show on the docket, if you will, to discuss the presentation of Broadway in the movies and... More specifically, what's going on with Broadway now, and uh, and are we are we at the point where Broadway is presenting us just uh, the the original music from uh, movies that are now on Broadway, and they're presenting that as if it's an original show? It's kind of derivative. Um, we've seen uh, the history of Broadway begin in uh, 1866, believe it or not. We go all the way back there, and then when there was Ziegfeld Follies in 19, all the way up until the 1950s, 1957, a uh, variety show with lavish productions. And Dave is very, very excited and interested to hear all the history of Broadway as we sit here today. I'm here with David Cohen. Oh, thanks. Thanks for acknowledging my existence. You know here, I was yeah. wondering when that was going to happen. <laughs> But fill in the, the 1866 was the first musical. What happened between then and 1907? I'm, I'm really interested in knowing well, all the They the were history. planning the No No Nanette uh, uh, play, and that, of course, was... Babe Ruth. Yes, that was the play that... Uh, Finally. ...was financed by Babe Ruth, if you will. So you could say Babe Ruth contributed to the presentation of Broadway as well as building the, uh, the stadium in How the How do Bronx. you like that? Yes. Uh, in addition to that, there was a, the Ziegfeld Follies ran for 50 years from 1907 to 57. And yeah, of course, remember Dave remembers that. that yeah. Um, part of that was a, a vaudevillian type of performance, but a big, 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 lavish show production there. Then George M. Cohen was a pioneer of the book musical. What does that mean? To us uh, novices, if you will, that's where there's a story told in a musical, um, not ah. just playing music. Right. So how do you feel about all this uh, uh, so far, Dave? You, you, we're going to now talk about Rodgers and Hammerstein in the uh, 1940s and 50s. And in the 60s, there was uh, Hello, Dolly and West Side Story. This is quite the history lesson. And which brings us to a favorite story of ours, right? We were... Well, before we do, in the 70s, there was something called the chorus line that I think changed uh, Broadway a little bit in that uh, it began to present modern, if you will, type of music. Let's just take a listen to a short song that's uh, known from Chorus Line. One singular sensation Every little step she takes All right, we can cut that down. I, I, I just kind of almost, I uh, hate to say that, vomited at that point. I've heard that <laughs> song so many times, but it's it's a classic, and of course, uh, that's, that's what got people going to the theater in, in the 70s. And then... Something happened in 1977 that, that we were there Changed for, our lives I. forever. Changed our lives forever. And it wasn't the actual... Our lives meaning yours and mine, not Correct. anyone else out there. <laughs> and no one with regard to Broadway. But <laughs> no one even thinks of this as a seminal show, but I do, in that uh, we didn't get a chance to see the real Beatles. Uh, certainly we've done a show about the Beatles. We've done two shows about the Beatles and how they affected... We were too young. <laughs> but we did see Beatlemania. We did. Beatlemania, the Broadway show. Yes. When we were in high school. And that was a, a terrific performance. It was something that wasn't really recorded. There's a movie, but it's, it's pretty poor. Um, and it doesn't re reflect no, I didn't even know there was there. a movie. Yeah, there, okay. there is. I've, uh, I've seen it. And it, it doesn't, doesn't really give you the feel of what it was. It really was like seeing the Beatles. Let's listen to some people back in the day that uh, what they were saying when this show was first aired. Beatlemania is playing to standing ovations across the country, and here's why. Yeah, I never saw the Beatles in person, but I feel like I have now. They look like them, they sound like them. <laughs> 
very visual. Visual effects are really the last word. Beatlemania wow. starts August 7th for limited engagement at the Schubert Theater. I think that, yeah. But yeah. do you remember the, in the commercial when one of the women said, I just wanted to rip their clothes off? Remember <laughs> yeah, that? I do remember that. And it was, it, that's exactly what got us to go. That was the thing that inspired us. We saw that commercial. We really we wanted want to rip that. the clothes off. But <laughs> the excitement, I think, was the essence. Right, because, of course, at Shea Stadium, now we all remember that's what happened. Uh, and everywhere, everywhere they went, uh, they, were, they were mobbed and so forth. But more specifically to Broadway, that to me was the first time that music that you already knew Right. was being performed on Broadway until then since 18, what was that date? 1860. I believe it was, let me check my textbook that you wrote. Yes. Um, 1866. With two exclamation points. because Seven realize. Sisters, it was called. <laughs> right after to. the Civil War, as a matter of fact, right? If you really think about it, Civil War, 1865. People needed a break from this. Enough with the Civil War. They wanted something lighter. They wanted a musical. But since then, until, you know, over 100 years, Broadway did not have anything but original music. Music and original the uh, gall. You know, the gall. Imagine so the Beatles broke broke uh, broke the way there and and broke the bank. Uh, so that was the that first show. musical that that I saw and you saw. We we went together with some friends and we had a great time city. in the city. We were teenagers at the time. I don't think parents would let a sixteen year old go or seventeen year old go into the city. Not, I don't think we so. We run in. A, we did have a group of about I don't know maybe ten tops people, right. and right. we went into the city on the train the whole bit. And I remember we were naive and we saw these uh, these fellows at the corner of the street. This is back oh, in the seventies. This up, and uh, oh, no. <laughs> there was a fellow with cards going back and forth. Three we card later Monty learned game. out the, what was it called? A three card Monty. What, what happened there, Dave? I don't remember. Uh, exactly it's, it's it's cloudy to me. I don't <laughs> totally recall. We all stood around, and and someone got sucked into the the excitement of it all. It was a low point. For and me. had a, a wallet full of money. I think back then 20 bucks was a huge amount. I right? lost more than that. I think the tickets were like 12. So, yeah. you know, it, yeah. comparatively speaking, right? Tickets and like, what, I don't know. It looks so easy. I mean, it, it was three shells and you just had to figure out where the, the, the thing was under the shell, <laughs> the ball or whatever it was. I thought it was cards. Was it a card, the black and, and, and red card? Or maybe it was not. Anyway, either way, it was one of those two games. No, it, was a she- it wasn't three card, Monty. Oh. It was a shell game. Oh, it was the shell game. It was the shell right. game, right. And you, we were excited. We just got the subway. Well, first time in the city without the parents. We had all these friends and girls and guys. We were having a great time. It's going to see Beatlemania. This, this is like a, a high point. And literally five minutes into the city, Dave lost every dollar he had. <laughs> it, was, it was, I lost 20, and then I figured I could do it. Again, like I must have just <laughs> yeah. missed the first one. I remember one. you I, digging into those pants. Remember those? We wore those tight jeans back then, the Jordans. The, the Jordans. You were digging in. I could just see it as I sit here now. Just flashback of you uh, digging into that pocket for another, another. The front pocket, you had like one more bill. You never have a wallet. You just had like the one more the bill. bills. I think, I think it was like 60 bucks I ended up blowing on it. I would I would have bet more, but the show was starting. Right. So, <laughs> Since oh, that then, that's why you don't go to racetrack, I guess, at this point. Yeah. I mean, you've gotten away from uh, from that. I learned so, a valuable lesson, though, that day. Which was? Um, <laughs> stay away from three-card Don't month. gamble. Right. Well, don't go to the city with me. I don't know if I was a bad influence. But... Along those time, along that time came another gentleman that that kind of brought Broadway uh, along and still has an effect to this day. He, to me, was the George Cohen of his day, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and of course uh, with Tim Rice, uh, another talented individual. They brought to Tim Rice is the fellow that works with Elton John. They brought to to bear a Jesus Christ superstar, and let's hear how how that. <laughs> Uh, you get the idea on that one, uh, and, and you've probably heard uh, that ad nauseum as well. That also was turned into a movie, so we were seeing a lot of things happening on Broadway where musicals uh, such as that, such as West Side Story, such as Sound of Music, such as Man of La Mancha, all were successful on Broadway and being brought to uh, the movie theaters unsuccessfully, but they were, they were being, that was being done uh, to bring Broadway to the masses, if you will. I guess that's part of it. Um, and that also, with, with the advent of Jesus Christ Superstar, began the career of Andrew Lloyd Webber, who brought us uh, Evita in 78, uh, Cats in 81. Oh, Cats was so good. 
That was a great one. Uh, I remember going to see Cats. I think that was probably the second one I went to. I don't know about you. I, I went to Cats uh, on, a, on a, uh, a dare, a, a dare, if you will. And I went to go see it, uh, trying to impress a young lady. And I sat through this show. It was really my first show besides Beatlemania. And I knew when Beatlemania was ending is when they broke up. That was easy, right? <laughs> In this particular show, I heard, you know, Memories. That was the song. So I, I hear Memories being played, and it's over, and the curtain comes up. And I put my jacket on, and I'm ready to go. And I hear that you you can have an opportunity to, to meet this the big cat, Mephistopheles, you know, in between intermission. And we'll be right back for another hour and a half of this malarkey. You thought I the was, show was over. I thought it was over. I, I was <laughs> devastated because that is, to me as a kid, was not a fun show. But it was for many, many, many people. We'll be right back to, to continue this dis- scintillating discussion of our interaction <laughs> with Broadway and how it affects you on everything old is new again. News Radio 103.9. Before one, we're going to start the arguments you're going to love to have. This portion of Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by ResumeDoctorInc.com. When you're seeking to change your career, apply for a promotion, or trying to find a job, your resume is the first thing that's seen that represents you to a potential employer. Make sure your resume makes a clear, concise, and professional impression of who you are so you can get that job interview. Send your current resume to ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com for a free online review. You'll receive a timely reply with a reasonable quote to properly prepare your resume. Let them make sure you have a resume that will get you noticed. Send your resume or questions to resume doctor inc at AOL.com. That's resume doctor inc at AOL.com. There's only yes, there's only this. Forget regret. All life is yours to miss. No. Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. That kind of ended pretty quick. It was going kind of good there. I really was not a, a Rent fan back in the day when that started back in the late uh, late 90s. But my wife uh, dragged me to it, and uh, and then there was a movie made that actually was made as a nice representation of that play, whether you like it or not. They did a nice job with that. It made a couple dollars. Um, a lot of times now in the 90s, what was happening was that these movies were made from existing Broadway shows and and trying to again bring them to the general public, and they always weren't successful. But what happened on Broadway was that, uh, for what I understand, was that Rent and uh, even re- recently uh, Les Mis, which is coming back and just came back. Even if the play doesn't, uh, I should say, the movie doesn't do great, it does bring the awareness to let's say the out of towners towners coming to New York City wanting to see a play and they've now heard or seen ads for these uh, play, uh, plays as movies and they and the box office for Broadway has never been better at right. present right. now speaking of rent and to me that is analogous to Les Mis in 1987 um, and all the Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, plays these were continuing the trend of original works on Broadway original works that were uh, Real theater, real theater that gave you a significant meaning, social issues discussed. Um, Les Mis talks about life and death, and what is is there life after death, and and, and infers that what there did is. Cats do? What did what did? Yeah, can we get back? So when you were when you went to Cats, not to <laughs> not to get away from this topic, but were you you were on a date? You said. Right. Yes, I was okay. on a date, and I was trying to impress. I was actually wearing a you know a, a sports coat, and I was uh, and there were these. If you remember the time, that was an interactive play where you sat down, and there was like right on like the seat next to you or the aisles, there were these cats, these people dressed up as cats, oh, right. right there licking themselves yeah. and all this. It was a lot of malarkey, but I put up <laughs> with it because I this girl really wanted to see this show. So what happened? I mean, was it worth going to cats? Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 it was the first and last date? Uh, uh, no, no. I, I continue to try to impress this young lady. But let's put it this way. That show and my, I guess, the fact that at the end of it, first of all, me getting up and putting my jacket back on and into mission and saying, okay, let's get going, <laughs> didn't impress her too much. The second thing was I didn't know who T.S. Eliot was, and I still don't. Like, God forbid. He's a big, what, uh Guy that writes poems. Well, he's got all these poems about cats, a and that's guy what that, show that was writes about. Poems. T. S. Eliot, a, a, a poet. 
<laughs> what do you call these guys? <laughs> anyway, I think, I think they're called poets. <laughs> All right, yeah, but but that that then turned. Well, I guess you could say that he didn't turn the show into or his poems into to to a show. It was Andrew Lloyd Webber that did that. Tim right. Rice, right. which is the genius of of those two, and I don't mean to right. put them down because they th- that was the longest running sh- when it ended, the longest running show on Broadway. Yeah, I, no I can doubt. see why she didn't go out with you again. But <laughs> well, from your perspective, I'm, I, I don't know what <laughs> she was thinking, but I guess she was thinking the same thing. You Can were. we divulge names? I don't remember. No, the... not going to do that. Because, uh, you know, right. we're, we're nationwide. On yeah. the internet, you know, you can listen to us. Oh, on, that's true. I uh, just meant I'm trying to remember who it was because I knew you back then. But we'll, yes. I will talk off the air. About yeah, it. I guess because I, you know, uh, you can listen to us on Long Island News Radio dot com. Just click listen live if you're uh, if you're not uh, not in the area, and or listen to our podcast at Everything Old Is New Again dot biz. Feel free to do so, and then please comment about our shows, if you will, and send us the comments to old new again at AOL.com. But then in 94, something happened that, that really changed uh, the world, if you will, and on Disney, uh, I mean on Broadway, and that Disney brought to the theater a presentation of a movie. So something now from the movies, not the reverse, something coming from the movies to the Broadway stage in Beauty and the Beast in 1994. And that stayed on Broadway till 2007, highly successful. So now, in the late 90s to the even till present now, I see there's a struggle, if you will, between the derivative works, you know, works taken from other, uh, other I guess, existing products, uh, such as Lion King, which was a, a movie first and brought to the stage, versus like a Les Mis, if you will, that's a brand new original production or an Andrew Lloyd Webber production that is something that um, that they're battling each other. Uh, let's uh, take a listen to what was on about the same time that Rent came out. Let's listen to a little bit of The Lion King. So we recognize that song. They've changed some of the music. They've added some music. I, I, I still haven't seen it. I have, a, you know, as we all know, a five-year-old girl. So within the next year or so, I'll be going. Um, I, it sounds like it would be okay. I guess I would enjoy it. I saw it. <clears throat> what would you think? With, uh, my son, when he was younger, they, it was a birthday party, believe it or not. And the birthday party was this: the mom and dad of this kid. They were five years old, I think, okay. at the time. Um, invited about 20 kids and their parents to to the Lion King. Um, yeah, it you know, it was nice. It was the kids liked it. 17 years later, it's still there. It's I mean, still there. The thing that gets me, oh, everybody talks about these costumes, and you'll not realize that it's it's human beings being these animals and all that. It was pretty. And I impressive. couldn't imagine that, but I've seen it now. Yeah. You know, since the internet's come around, you can see, and really is done uh, done well. Um, then. We've still got this this struggle here now of original works versus versus broad um, I should say versus uh, Disney and uh, something came out in 2003 that uh, that was quite successful and quite original. To those who ground me, take a message back from me. Tell them now around that, well, of course, that's wicked. Uh, and Dina Menzel, who later on, uh, well, before that, did Rent, was an original uh, star of Rent on Broadway, and did now those Let It Go song from Frozen, um, which which we've known and heard over this last year. And now they have a whole show built around her. Right? And now there's a... Exactly, if then? Exactly. Uh, which is quite uh, successful at this point as well. Um, and Dina Menzel's the name. I think uh, we could probably encapsulate that, send it off in an email if we could ever find John Travolta's email. Because <laughs> that's the name of the person that he was that trying he, to he, pronounce. Uh, right, that he Oscars. messed up. Yeah, if you remember that. Um, and around that time, uh, Disney came out with, a couple, uh, four years later, came out with something else on Broadway. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free, wish I could be part of 
Okay, again, a song that you know already before you go into the theater. So Disney's banking on yeah, the idea that, that was yeah. that obviously was uh, the Little Mermaid. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I was just you were struggling. Say you that. didn't know? Huh? No, I didn't know oh, at all. Okay. <laughs> I've become the Disney expert with my little girl. So you, have you had more success going to Broadway shows with with your wife? I assume that yes. We went to go see. Um, uh, I have a little bit of time here. I'll tell the story. We went to go see Phantom of the Opera when we were dating. Uh-huh. And again, another show that I, I kind of, you know, okay, I'll go see it, whatever. And he, he, we made a day of it on a Saturday. So we go in. It was the day show. We went to go see it, what they call it, the matinee. Um, and I was suitably impressed. I, I sort of enjoyed that uh, that show. It has a little bit of, you know, I'm the Star Trek guy and, and psychedelics and whatever. It had a little bit of a, you know, ghost story in there. So I kind of liked that. I liked the, the orchestrations. So um, I was kind of into going to another show. So we had lunch, and I said, let's go to see uh, if we can get some tickets to see another show. And her big show, of course, she loves Les Mis as well. So we tried to get tickets for Les Mis. We could not get the tickets. She'd go to those, you know, the day booth there. Yeah, and try the two to get line there, right? right or TKTS, right, whatever it might right. be. And couldn't get them. So I'm the baseball fan that I am. I said, well, why don't we just go in front of the theater and, and scalp them? Which I, I don't. I guess they don't do, but I, I did that. Something made us do that. We went there again. This is before we were engaged, and I uh, was again trying to impress. So uh, I figured, you know, if we can get, scalp some tickets here, um, you know, be a nice, a nice day. Oh yeah, because I know she knows this, this play and loves it already. As we get to the in front of the theater, of course, there's no one scalping, but some fellow walks up to us and says, uh, uh, "My peeps aren't showing here." I don't even know what that meant. My peeps aren't showing, but whatever it was, he gave us ticket, two tickets to see Les Mis. By the time I figured out that this, he just fella, gave them to you. Just gave you didn't them. have to. You didn't and have to out pay. of a huge crowd of people, we had just arrived. I don't know. He could have given it to anybody else. Right. Gives them to us. Um, I turn around, you know, look over my shoulder to see to, and to thank him and, and question him and maybe give him a tip. Or I don't know what. And he's disappeared. Wow. So for us, he was an angel. And I don't know if he really was an angel or not. Uh, if he was like uh, the, the the ghost from, uh, uh, you know, Phantom of the Opera coming type of thing coming. Right. But, but it was your idea to, to go and try to get it. And, and, and you scored the tickets. So the tickets, she idea. loved the show. Uh, we I actually really enjoyed that show. You come to love these things. If you're with someone that loves it, you see it through, through their eyes. And speaking of which, we will now continue our discussion next week on Everything Old is New Again with another discussion of Broadway and you. Enjoy.